One kilometer straight up, three times taller than the Eiffel Tower, the world's most ambitious skyscraper just broke its silence after seven years. This is the Jeddah Tower, and what's happening right now will blow your mind. A tower so tall, it literally disappears into the clouds. A structure that makes the Burj Khalifa look like a toy. Seven years of silence, billions of dollars, and now it's back. While you are watching other buildings get built, engineers in Saudi Arabia were solving problems that most experts said were impossible to solve. They're building the world's tallest tower while rewriting the laws of physics. Let me take you back to 2018. Construction crews working around the clock, cranes piercing the desert sky, 63 floors already climbing toward the heavens. Then, overnight, everything stopped. Not because of money, not because of engineering problems, but because of something far more dramatic. Prince Al Walid bin Talal, the billionaire backing this monster, was arrested during Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption crackdown. The main contractor, the Saudi Bin Laden Group, was removed from the project. Payments froze. Workers went home. For seven long years, this tower sat like a concrete monument to unfinished dreams. 63 floors of pure ambition, waiting in the desert. Sandstorms covered the construction equipment. The concrete core stood silent, a testament to interrupted greatness. During those years, skeptics said it would never restart. Too expensive, too complicated, too ambitious for a kingdom trying to transform its entire economy. They were wrong. On January 21, 2025, Prince Al Walid bin Talal was on site as concrete was poured for the 64th floor, marking the official restart of construction. It wasn't the same team, and it wasn't the same approach, but it carried something far more dangerous. Desperation fueled by unlimited resources and eight months of relentless momentum. By March 2025, they were building one floor every four days. By June, the tower had received its first glass panels. By July, a second massive Lieber 355 crane was installed. By August, the structure had reached an incredible 70 floors. And as we're recording this in September 2025, they're still accelerating. But speed isn't the crazy part. The crazy part is how they're building it, and why what's happening right now has never been attempted in human history. Right now, as you're watching this video, there are two teams working around the clock at Jeddah Tower. One crew handles the new floors, another handles the fittings. They work at night to avoid 50-degree days. Thanks to artificial lighting, you could see two distinct work zones climbing the tower simultaneously. The central core leads the advance. As of now, the tower stands at approximately 310 meters, already taller than the Eiffel Tower. That's 70 complete floors, topped by 10 incomplete ones. But here's what makes this construction unlike anything before. The staggered building process. Form workers operate in blocks of five stories. They start with the tower's central column, then move to the side wings and finish with the facade where windows will be installed. This staggering respects concrete drying times and the building's structural integrity. Yellow formwork, that's the Doka brand supplying the system, climbs higher week by week like a vertical construction factory. Two high-pressure concrete pumps in the central core extend by five stories every few weeks. Steel tubes allow concrete to be poured from the ground through an articulated arm system that reaches heights never before attempted. And the elevators? A second elevator structure appeared in July 2025, designed to handle workers through the first third of construction. This will be replaced by a third interior elevator system designed for the full height. At over a thousand meters tall, that's roughly three Eiffel Towers stacked on top of each other. This thing faces forces that would destroy normal buildings. Wind at that height doesn't just push, it creates vortex shedding that can literally tear structures apart. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsed from this exact phenomenon. Now imagine that force hitting something three times taller than anything humans have ever built. So how do you solve the unsolvable? See, the tower's design is inspired by desert plant growth. Three asymmetrical wings that taper as they rise, creating a Y-shaped footprint. Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill, the Chicago-based architects behind this masterpiece, studied how desert plants survive in harsh Saudi winds, how their fronds fold and twist to deflect rather than resist. When wind hits these three wings, something incredible happens. The asymmetrical design breaks up wind flow, preventing those destructive vortex patterns from forming. It's like the building's constantly deflecting punches instead of taking them head on. 
Three separate wind tunnel tests were conducted throughout the design period. The first was a high-frequency force balance test using a 1 to 800 scale model, about 1.25 meters tall, in a Canadian lab at RWDI. This provided base overall loads and acceleration estimates. Then came the high-pressure integration model, where a rigid model was equipped with hundreds of pressure sensors on all exposed surfaces. The measured pressures were integrated to understand load distribution with weight. Finally, they built aeroelastic models that vibrate just like the real structure, dynamically calibrated to match the tower's exact movement characteristics. This is the most expensive form of wind tunnel testing, typically only done for super tall flexible structures. The result? A building that doesn't fight wind. It makes wind irrelevant. Now, while every other super tall building uses steel frames, Jetta towers using concrete all the way up to 600 meters then switching to steel for the final 400 meters. Wait, what? Concrete? For the world's tallest building? Yes, and it's brilliant. Steel is heavy, really heavy. At a thousand meters, the weight of steel framework alone would crush the lower floors. Plus, steel expands and contracts with temperature changes. In the Saudi desert, where temperatures swing from scorching days to cool nights, steel would be constantly moving, creating stress fractures, but concrete solves all these problems at once. It's lighter than steel frameworks when used efficiently. It doesn't expand and contract as much. And here's the kicker. It gets stronger over time, especially the ultra-high performance concrete they're using. But not just any concrete. The structural system uses 85 MPA concrete strength without columns, outriggers, floor beams, spandrel beams, and vertical transfers. All walls are interconnected and each structural element resists both wind and gravity loads. The three wings form massive reinforced concrete walls that buttress a colossal central core. No columns, no complex transfer beams. The entire structure is essentially one giant interconnected concrete sculpture that channels every force, gravity, wind, seismic, directly into the Earth. And speaking of the Earth, let's talk about what's holding this monster up. You know how they say you need strong foundations? Jetta Tower's foundation makes the Burj Khalifa look like it's sitting on toothpicks. We're talking about a raft foundation that's 5 meters thick. That's 16 feet of solid concrete as the base, spanning over 7,500 square meters. But that's just the beginning. Underneath that raft, 270 board piles drill down up to 105 meters into the earth. Each pile ranges from 1.5 to 1.8 meters in diameter. To put that in perspective, you could drive a car through the largest ones. These foundations go more than twice as deep as the Burj Khalifa's. The geological surveys for this project were insane. Engineers had to map every layer of rock, sand, and gravel for over 100 meters down. The soil in Jeddah isn't ideal. A mix of limestone, sand, and coral rock. One weak spot could doom the entire project. They had to drill through limestone, sand, and coral rock, creating an underground anchor system that could hold down a small city. The foundation alone weighs more than some entire skyscrapers. The engineering required to ensure differential settlement doesn't exceed 25 millimeters, about the thickness of a quarter. Across such a massive base is absolutely mind-boggling. It took more than a year to create this vast foundation, with construction beginning in 2013 and the foundation work completing in 2014. But how do people actually get to the top of this thing? Imagine pressing a button and traveling 660 meters straight up. That's a journey through different atmospheric pressures, different weather zones, different worlds entirely. The tower will have 59 elevators, including 54 single-deck and 5 double-deck units, plus 12 escalators. The express elevators to the observation deck move at 10 meters per second. That's 22 miles per hour straight up. You could travel from the ground floor to the 50th floor of a normal building in the time it takes these elevators to go just halfway up Jetta Tower. But here's the problem nobody talks about. At that height, regular steel cables would snap under their own weight. Steel cables can only handle about 500 meters before they become too heavy to lift themselves. The solution? They're using carbon fiber cables. Carbon fiber is stronger than steel, but weighs a fraction as much. These cables can handle the extreme length without breaking, and they don't stretch like steel would. The elevator system alone is a $100 million engineering marvel. Finnish company Kone designed these systems using the most advanced vertical transportation technology available. The double-decker system reduces wait times and increases efficiency even at extreme heights. 
Three sky lobbies are positioned at different heights, allowing passengers to transfer elevators midway instead of running cables the full kilometer. It's like having subway transfers, but vertical. At level 157, there's something that sounds impossible. A circular sky terrace 30 meters across, completely open to the sky at over 600 meters up. You'll be standing on a platform higher than most clouds with nothing but air between you and the ground below. And because this terrace has to withstand wind speeds that can exceed 200 kilometers per hour, the glass barriers are made from laminated tempered glass that's thicker than most building walls. The floor itself is designed to flex slightly with wind movement while remaining perfectly stable for visitors. Now, building the world's tallest tower in the middle of a desert presents some unique challenges that go far beyond normal construction. Like, how do you keep it cool when outside temperatures hit 50 degrees Celsius? How do you ensure materials don't expand and crack at extreme heat? Each of the tower's three sides features a series of notches that aren't just design elements. They're strategic shadow creators. Each notch casts shadows across different parts of the building throughout the day, reducing solar heat gain by up to 30%. It's like the building creates its own shade system. The high-performance exterior wall system uses low-emissivity, high-performance glass that blocks infrared radiation while maintaining crystal-clear views of the Red Sea. The curtain wall is designed to handle not just heat, but sandstorms, high winds, and the corrosive effects of salt air from the nearby ocean. And the cooling system goes deeper. The building's design allows cool air to be pulled in from high altitudes, where it's naturally cooler. The air conditioning system recycles condensed water to save energy. Even the elevators generate electricity on the way down, like regenerative braking in electric cars. But Jeddah Tower isn't just a building. It's a vertical city with over 130 floors. The tower will house a Four Seasons luxury hotel with 200 rooms, each designed with panoramic views of either the Red Sea or the sprawling city of Jeddah. Premium residential apartments, over 500 units ranging from single-bedroom luxury suites to massive penthouses, will house families in the clouds. Class A office spaces will accommodate international businesses looking to establish Middle Eastern headquarters. The world's highest observation deck will be at 2,112 feet, offering breathtaking views across Saudi Arabia's coastline. They say it'll be ready by August 2028. So far, they're finishing a floor every three to four days. It has already hit level 70 out of 157 floors, and the pace is speeding up. At roughly 45% complete, crews are working around the clock with global consultants like Turner Construction, Dar Al Handassa, and Adrian Smith plus Gordon Gill. Of course, challenges remain. Logistics get tougher with height. Weather can cause delays, and building at this scale throws new problems every day. But if the current pace holds and the steel transition goes smoothly, that date isn't just possible. It's likely. By 2028, we'll know for sure. But for now, keep an eye on Visionary. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when it's all set. Until next time.